Good to see you, Banger fans. Blaine Smith here, bringing you another episode of Overkill Global. The idea behind this show? We take a look at specific metal scenes in specific countries. We talk to a local expert, and we pick five records that, not necessarily the best, but the five records that we think give you a great idea of the scene, and that personally, we like. Now, if you've watched the previous episodes, which we hope you have, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, I got a pretty good handle on these. I know a fair amount. Well, this week, I'm betting we got a curveball for you. We'll be checking out the Lebanese metal scene, specifically the Lebanese extreme metal scene. Lebanon is a tiny country of just six million people. A lot of those people smoke, though. They have some of the highest smoking rates among any country in the world. And I can also personally attest to the magical healing properties of late night Lebanese food after a night of hard drinking. Small scene, lots of smoking and good drunk food. I'm sold, let's go. So why Lebanon? Well, earlier this year, a little band called Kerion came along. They released a great record, I covered it here, and it opened my eyes. We went on to become good pals, and they put me in contact with our expert. He's the organizer of the Beirut Metal Festival, so I think he knows a little bit about what's going on in the area. Let's check in with him. I'm here to actually discuss one of my favorite albums, uh, one of my favorite extreme albums from the Middle East and Lebanon. Uh, I never actually discussed this with anyone before, but one band called Ayat released an album in 2008 titled Six Years of Dormant Hatred, which I believe one of the most amazing albums that came out from the Middle East as, as an extreme uh, and the extreme genre. And, and this album is very controversial and talks about a lot of things we're afraid to discuss or mention, such as, you know, anti-religion, anti-politics, how, how metalheads or, or actually everyone struggled to live in the Middle East or in Lebanon. And they had many religious uh, fanatics, you know, being on top of their heads and trying to get to the bottom of who are the members or the musicians uh, behind the band Ayat. Six Years of Dormant Hatred is, is full of anger, is full of hate. Uh, as I like to put it, not hate, you know, towards uh, life, but hate towards how, at the time, a brainwashed a community saw metal and they started, you know, attacking it from the religious point of views and or political point of views. And the music is very extreme. I believe you should check it out. Six Years of Dormant Hatred by the band Ayat. Cheers. And now, back to this guy. So, up first for me, we have Damar. Triumph Through Spears of Sacrilege. It came out in 2007 on Nuclear War Now. Despite the fact that it came out in 2007, actually the band formed in 2004 and broke up two years later. So this is one of those posthumously released albums. Let's check it out. Now, due to uh, little things that we don't normally have to deal with uh, over here, like uh, civil war and occupation by a foreign government, uh, the Lebanese metal scene starts a little later than a lot of others. I couldn't even really find a band that was formed before the late 90s, and even then, they were around for a little while and they broke up due to the, again, instability. But finding this little gem made that whole exploration worth it. Now, I'm one of those people that doesn't enjoy the endless specific subclassifications of metal that some people really go ham with, but in this case, I feel it's pretty easy to slap the old war metal label on these guys and send that bad boy out of the factory. Total Insanity is the name of the game here. The album starts, breakneck speed, you're flying along, and then suddenly it jerks to a halt, and then it's forward again. It's crazy. Vocals are shriekings of a madman, and even when you can understand them, what you understand him saying is, do you wish to die over and over again? and they use a bunch of samples and sound effects, adds to the insanity, and unlike a lot of bands in this genre, it's well recorded. I don't know how they manage that, but, you know, share your secrets. Downside, it's 19 minutes, and this is all they ever released. So, that's a bummer. Uh, but, 
it's good enough that I can easily give it four out of five skulls that are also revenge fans. Up next, we have Blackia, with their independent release, Line of Fear, from 2016. Now, I know we've jumped ahead a bunch. It's not because this isn't chronological. This is chronological. Things are complicated. I'll explain it after you listen to some. So this is a really interesting band whose history kind of is a little time capsule of the Lebanese metal scene's growth. Originally formed in 1995, I've actually heard them referred to as Lebanon's first metal band, but they would break up in 2001 for, you know, the usual reasons bands break up, war, poverty, being detained by the police, you know, real fun stuff. But the good news is they'd form again in 2007 and Eventually we'd get to this, their second release. It's a bit like a uh, metal smoothie. At first you might be taking a sip and you go, all right, this is some straight strawberry thrash. But then you get a little further and you're like, wait a minute, is that some prog papaya coming in? And then you get a Lebanese loquat bringing in some local Lebanese folk and your, your whole mind's blown. The integration of folk elements is actually a really cool thing about this. They uh, use a goblet drum in addition to a standard kit that brings a entirely unique sound, but you don't lose the regular kit in order to get to it. I think the most impressive thing here is the ability to never overuse anything. Sometimes the band you'll start thinking, okay, this is sounding a little mega deathy, and then suddenly the vocal range kicks up and you're like, oh, okay, this is an Iron Maiden song. And then we're like, okay, well maybe it's just a little derivative of these kind of big international bands. You get some Lebanese folk that none of those bands can even hope to replicate and bam, you've got this really unique, interesting band. Basically, if you like the idea of Orphan Land conceptually, but find listening to it a bit much, this might be the answer. It combines perfect levels of aggression, traditional metal, and really unique folk elements that create a strange, wonderful album. And that's why I'm giving it four and a half out of five goblet shape, go four and a five, four and a half out of five goblet drum space space. So that's why I'm giving it four and a half out of five Goblet drum shaped skulls. Yeah. Up next, we've got Damage Right with another independent release, The Dehumanizing Factor, which came out in 2017. The band formed in 2013, and four years later, we got this deathy, thrashy album. Let's have a listen. Yes, again, we have another blend. Also, once again, we have a Lebanese band that's able to hold their own on the international scene. Speed is the name of the game on this album, though. We've got drums blasting away with some guitars playing both competent solos and fun, catchy riffs, and a unique, raspy voice over top that really brings together a nice package. The main criticism I'd have here is this band doesn't quite manage to differentiate themselves from any of the other bands that sound like this. They do have a little bit of a folk outro on one of the songs, but it's kind of just an outro and it really could have been on any album. As I stated though, this is their first release. It's technically sound, so hey, hopefully next record they just find what makes them beautiful and unique snowflakes. That's why I'm giving it three and a half out of five after school special skulls. And for our fourth album, we come back to where we started, Chaotium. It's called Damnodia Memoria. They released it in February 2018. It's another independent release. I'm starting to sense a pattern here. Have a listen. <laughs> So 
So if you don't know, I already reviewed that album. You can check it out here. So I'm not going to quite go into the review on it again. What I will say is, now that I've gone on this little journey, I have learned a little bit about the band through that process. Like a lot of Lebanese bands, they are a blend of styles. And sure, Black and Death are old peanut butter jelly pals and go together great. But, as I said in my review, they did do a really great job of infusing a punk hardcore vibe in there as well, which is a trickier feat to do. And now that I know just how small this scene is, it's even more impressive that they were able to effectively use such mercenary level talent as Frederick Wittigs and Linus Klausnitzer. So, what's the band been up to since my little review? Well, they went on to win one of Metal Hammer's Golden Gods Award for Global Metal, and they're working on a new album. Linus is returning on bass, and they're using Adrian Erlandson from At The Gates on drums. Pretty cool. Now, in my original review, I gave them a four out of five, but that was a critical review where I really had to, you know, go in and try and pick apart an album. Here, this is just a celebratory list of albums I really like, and on here, it's my must listen. It's great. It's awesome. Five out of five skulls that are all real good friends. And we come to our last release. I'm gonna take a guess and uh, just shoot that it's an independent release. Yeah, it's an independent release. It's Slave to Sirens with Terminal Leeches, which came out in March of 2018. They first formed in 2016 and provide a pretty optimistic look on the future of the Lebanese metal scene, if you ask me. No The first thing that blew me away when I listened to it was just how professional the whole thing was. You have a band that's been around for two years, they're in their early 20s, they're independent, and yet somehow the only way I can tell that is by the fact that it's 19 minutes long. I mean, even the cover is sick. Look at that cover. So we'll first talk about the vocals because, you know, it's going to be the thing you're most curious about. And all I can say is massive thumbs up. They're great. Maya S. Carilla manages a really unique feat, which is that the vocals are still harsh, they're still aggressive, but they still stand distinctly female. I do find sometimes when you have a harsh female vocalist, you kind of lose that distinct sound. She's managed to keep it, and with the combination of the aggressive lyrics, just a really awesome front person for this band. Thankfully, the rest of the band is up to snuff as well. Both guitarists really shine. They're able to solo, they've got some catchy riffs, and it's all very headbangy, which is very fun for listening to, and it's also really fun to watch them because they've got massive hair, just huge. The drumming is solid, Double Kick isn't all over the album, but when it's used, it's used well, and the whole thing kind of comes together to have a groovy Pantera vibe that I super dig. My one complaint with this, 19 minutes. That's all. Give me more. I'll take more. It's four out of five skulls that also want more. So, what did I learn? Well. I learned that one of the nice things about having a relatively young metal scene means there hasn't been this fragmentation where everybody feels they need to fall into genres. You like a sound? Play some of that. You find something else that you think works with it? Add that in there too. It makes for some cool work. I've also learned that I think Lebanese people build recording studios out of adamantium because for a country that has had to uh, explode for a variety of reasons several times, all of these records, even the goddamn war metal one, are impeccably produced and sound awesome. Uh, a lot of bands in a lot of countries could uh, take a little note from that. So now we come to the cool feature where if you're one of our Patreon supporters, you get to toss out some albums that you think belong on this list. Now, because I hoarded a bunch of the really good bands from Lebanon, we kind of left it a little bit more open to just cool bands from the Middle East. So, up first, we've got Crescent with the Order of Amenti on Listenable Records, put out in 2018. Some Egyptian death metal, you should check out. We've also got Nerve Cells Past Present Torture. It was released on Metal East Records in the Middle East and Life Force Records everywhere else. They're from Dubai, and hey, if they sound familiar, it might be because we featured them in Global Metal. And finally, we've got Melakesh with Sphinx, which is sort of a classic. It was released in 2003 on Osmos Records, and it's some Israeli black metal. So thanks again for coming on this journey with us. 
as usual, you know, you can support us on Patreon, you can subscribe, comment, and all that stuff. And hey, where are we going next? Maybe you can help us figure that out. We'll play a little game of Metal Carmen San Diego, and you can, you know, whatever, however that game works. Do it. Thanks for coming out. Have a good night. Fight those who enslave You live for gain, ship or death Take that to our place